Welcome to the latest episode of Griffin Hall. At this point, we could continue with the base construction, uh, but I'm missing a number of materials and resources that I think would make the process a lot easier and the end result much better. Uh, besides, I just spent a bunch of hours digging to the roots of the earth, so I think it's time to get some fresh air and enjoy the sunshine uh, as long as I'm home before the street lights come on. Therefore, it's time to go walk about in the overworld. Now, I have three main goals for this effort. The first is to simply figure out what's around us, and then to discover if or whether there are any useful points of interest in the general area. Uh, I'll be collecting data on these places, and I'll begin compiling a map of the region. Uh, at this point, I really don't plan to go underground much, or even at all, uh, but I will note where I find interesting cave entrances for a future return trip. The second is to find resources that I can bring back to the base and uh, start producing on my own. In this case, I'm talking about different crops and wood types. Um, pointed dripstone would be nice as it allows me to uh, convert dirt into clay. And since I'm fond of the items from the Fantasy's Furniture mod, uh, which requires one clay for each item I create, I'm definitely going to need stacks and stacks of clay. Lastly, there are the goodies to be found in chests and the various deposits to be mined, uh, including copper, iron, zinc, and the uh, special stone types, uh, including, and perhaps most importantly for a world using the Create mod, uh, andesite. Now, diorite would be a decent substitute, as I could then combine it with cobblestone to make andesite, but I would prefer to save my diorite for other stuff if at all possible. Now, before uh, beginning any trip, it's a very good idea to do some planning and make some uh, preparations before you head out. One of the key elements of this is to figure out where you're going and what you may need on the way. Uh, as I mentioned in the last episode, I've installed the small ships mod, and so I would like to use one of those ships for most of my time on the water. Uh, but I need to look at the map to figure out how useful a ship will be, uh, as opposed to the vanilla rowboats, which seem to be much more practical in narrow spaces, uh, especially long rivers. So I took a look at my map from the journal map mod, and uh, lo and behold, I was shocked to find that terrain generation must have changed between the time that I started the world and my uh, explorations to the neighboring villages in the second episode. Uh, unfortunately, the changes went unnoticed at that time as I was not paying attention to the very edges of the map. Uh, you can see from this map that there is a very well-defined break between the existing landscape and the newly generated lands. So, uh, that sucks. My guess is that the changes may have happened as a result of installing a, a mod update, but that kind of surprises me uh, as I'd been very careful not to update mods that I knew were even suspected are capable of affecting terrain generation. Obviously, that wasn't good enough. So uh, from this point forward, uh, I won't install any updates to this Minecraft instance, and I will pray that we don't have any crashing or otherwise world-ending bugs in the current mix. Uh, as for the damage that's already done, well, if this were some type of uh, story series or something like that, I would probably dump the whole shebang and start over. But this is simply a building series, and so I will accept it as it is, with the understanding that I now have a lot of additional terraforming in my future, and I'll just press on. When life gives you lemons, make lemonade, and then add some vodka. Uh, now with all that said, perusing the map looks like I might be able to use a small ship to full effect. Uh, if you're not familiar with the small ships mod, the ships are fair sized, and once you plop one down in the water, you can't pick it back up again, or at least you can't in survival mode. Uh, however, it has a nice and large onboard inventory, so it's worth taking along, and I will definitely be taking a rowboat as well for those hard to get at areas. However, since I built my base a fair bit inland, uh, I'll need to look at some place to park my boat. Now you may remember uh, my thoughts on merging the four villages to the west. While taking a fresh look at the map, I think I will open that inland lake to the sea and make a nice bay and harbor out of it, and that would be a much more convenient place to berth my ship. Uh, I have all the supplies I will need for an extended trip, but if I'm going to take uh, a small ship, I will need to build one. The most advanced material needed to make uh, the ship is a lead, and with the mods I have installed, I have multiple options for creating leads, and most of those use simple materials that I readily have at hand. So shipbuilding should be a snap. A big part of this mission is to bring back goodies, so it may be worthwhile to upgrade my backpack to carry more than I can at the moment. Now I'm using the Simply Backpacks mod, and I've accumulated enough gold and diamonds through digging the access shaft that I should be able to upgrade to a rare backpack without too much trouble. Now this will give me an additional 66 slots of storage space, and I haven't even been to the nether yet. 
So it'll be uh, very useful uh, at this early stage of the game. So it's time to head west to the sea. Now I found a pack of shore near the uh, as of yet uh, nameless stone keep that I found and I launched my ship from there only to realize that the default uh, control keys conflict with the journal map mod. Every time I tried to adjust the sails, I kept bringing up the main map, so I had to change the key bindings around a bit. Now, for those of you that run with a lot of mods, I'm sure you're very familiar with the idea of conflicting key binds uh, between the various mods. It's probably the, the least fun bit of running with mods. With the catastrophic world change, it looks as though we now have uh, warm oceans and biomes directly to the west. Now, I found a uh, rainforest full of mahogany trees and I grabbed some saplings while I was in the neighborhood. Uh, the mahogany trees come from the Biomes of Plenty mod and they provide a, a nice light colored wood with a pinkish purple hue. With just a little more saline, I found a, a source for both kinds of dripstone, which, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I need for clay production. And that completes one of my major goals almost right away, so that's uh, quite a bit of luck. As I cruised the high seas, I found several instances of uh, floatsome, like you see here. And in almost every single case, it turned out to be a worthwhile stop. Uh, no sign of Jack or Rose, or any other survivors though. It took me some time to realize that I had not grabbed one of the most common and basic resources in the game, which is sugar cane. Uh, so I stopped at the first place where I found some growing, and I did a little harvesting. Uh, I was still early into the trip, and the good luck just kept on coming. Uh, I found a patch of jungle that yielded cocoa beans, azaleas, jungle wood and saplings, and of course my precious bamboo. So at this point, I could just return back to the hall and call it a day and be totally satisfied with that. Uh, however, I'm naturally curious as to see uh, what other surprises this new world generation has uh, left on my doorstep. By this point on the trip, uh, I had already seen or encountered a few individuals from the Romer mod, but this one was more memorable as I found a lone acacia tree from which I was able to grow sapling and add to my growing botanical collection. Now, uh, the roamers are NPCs that are clearly different from villagers. Uh, in fact, they harvest uh, resources and then use those resources to build uh, and survive. They can be interacted with, and in fact, one can befriend them and interact in such a way as to produce offspring. Now, I'm not particularly interested in that bit, but I do find it very cool and fascinating from a, a technical standpoint. Aside from the patches of floatsam uh, that you can find on the water, uh, shipwrecks are a common sight around here just like they are in Vanilla Minecraft. Now, uh, I found a treasure map in this one, so that's another thing to look forward to in a future episode. Uh, a short ways uh, from the floatsam, I spotted a sail on the horizon, and as I drew closer, I realized it would be difficult to get uh, much closer without getting transformed into a human pincushion. Um, I can only assume that there are chests full of le loot on board, but uh, at least I know where the ship is for now and I can return when I'm a bit better prepared uh, to clean it out. Uh, the next segment of the trip was a long one, with uh, little of interest to draw me on shore, but uh, eventually I did spot some wild cabbage uh, from the Farmer's Delight mod, and so I came ashore to gather those, uh, especially the seeds. Now, uh, I have all the resources necessary to start producing chicken sandwiches, which are both delicious and nutritious, and an all-around great food source to have on hand, uh, even on Sundays. The new lands include several patches of the Mystic Grove biome from which I was able to grab uh, magic and jacaranda logs and saplings from uh, the Biomes of Plenty mod. Now I also grabbed some flowering oak saplings. Now uh, with the magic logs uh, I have access to blue wood which is suitable for almost any recipe that requires wood. And uh, the jacaranda wood also gives me a, a pale violet wood that can uh, likewise be used in almost uh, any recipe that calls for wood. 
Uh, and of course, flowering oak trees just look better than regular oak trees. A short distance away from the Mystic Grove, I found a cherry blossom grove. Uh, and that's where I picked up pink and white cherry saplings, uh, which are also from the biomes of Plenty Mud. Now, cherry wood is dark red and can be used in almost any recipe that requires wood. Uh, I also found a small and ancient ruin that had a chest containing uh, yet another treasure map. So that's something else to look forward to in a future episode. Now down the coast from the Cherry Blossom Grove is a stand of majestic redwoods. Now uh, I'm a huge fan of redwoods in real life and I'm pretty pleased with them within the Minecraft context. Uh, though the trees that grow from planted saplings are nothing compared to the giants that were formed during world generation. Now I found a village that seemed to be an interpretation of a, uh, a village on the British Moors. Uh, I named it Islington and explored it a bit. Uh, it has a nice location and offers all sorts of building possibilities. Now far to the south, I found a pretty little village that is obviously a product of one of my mods as it's patterned off the Japanese culture. Now I named it Matsuyama and I think I will uh, draw inspiration from this village so that when the time comes to refine it, I will stick with the Japanese theme and in fact uh, dig deeper into that culture and general vibe. So just a stone's throw away from Matsuyama is the uh, modded village of Numeanor, uh, situated on its own little island. Now that I've thought about it for a bit, um, the two villages are very close to each other and I think that I may uh, merge them as I plan to do with the villages west of the hall. Uh, I would keep the Japanese theme and replace the European styled castle on uh, Numeanor with a uh, Japanese style castle and attendant buildings. Um, in fact, I might build that whole thing out as a chief city of an entire region that's based on Japan and her culture. Just north of Matsuyama and Numeanor, I found a, a small colonial fleet, but uh, I didn't stop to explore the ships as it would take some uh, delicate maneuvering and I uh, don't yet have uh, enough skill with my small ship to do that. However, I have encountered fleets like this in the past, so I know that there's a great deal of wealth stored in the chests on the fleet. Uh, I will definitely come back here and do some um, uh, trading. Yeah, trading, that's it. Now north of the fleet, I found a small forested island where I was able to pick up fir saplings and toadstools. Now as a builder, I like having access to a wide palette of different materials and uh, colors with which to work. So every different tree type is a welcome addition to that palette. So by this time I'd covered the Western Hemisphere and uh, my pockets and the ship's hold were jam packed with goodies. So uh, I headed back to the hall to unload and prepare for the Eastern Hemisphere. Now after putting things away and doing a little maintenance work around the old homestead, uh, I returned to my ship and headed back south uh, to pick up my counterclockwise adventure. Now that's when I discovered the small vanilla village of uh, Missoula, which got its name from the surrounding biome and the neighboring Yellowstone biome, uh, which both remind me of my home state of Montana. So as I sailed north, uh, I found the eastern shores were sparsely populated with uh, little to no new material or items of interest, uh, except for the beginning of uh, some snowy biomes and then, of course, the Yellowstone biome near Missoula. Now, uh, I came north to where there's a join between the original map seed and the New World generation, and there's a great overhang there that covers a large cavern. Um, I tried to see if I could fill the overhang uh, and the cavern with water so that I could sail right through, uh, but it turns out that's not a quick or easy uh, solution. So uh, I dropped it for now, and I'm heading back uh, the other way to go all the way around and explore the northeast from the west. After circling back around, uh, I was blocked by a sandbar near some uh, ominous woods. Now, uh, I dug out the sandbar, and while I was there, I took the opportunity to gather uh, dead and umbran saplings before pressing on into the northeast. Now, umbran wood is dark purple in color, and umbran trees grow very quickly, 
and generate a massive uh, amount of wood, both of which make some welcome additions to my growing uh, resource collection. Now once I arrived in the northeast region of the map, uh, I found some more cold biomes, but no new resources to see. Uh, fortunately, I did discover a village in a swamp, uh, and the village has a clear swamp-based theme, uh, including customized villagers. So this must be another mod-produced village. Uh, I'm going to call it Mandeville. The second half of the trip proved to be far less interesting than the first. Uh, however, I found almost everything that I need or want at this point uh, without heading into the nether. So I'm uh, headed back to sort it all out and plant new trees and crops. Now I would like to have access to dark oak, but that's probably just a matter of time and additional exploration. However, there's a very serious need for resources from the nether. Specifically, I need quartz and I need to find a blaze spawner or two for uh, access to blaze rods and the blazes themselves. So the question is whether I dig out and start setting up the workshop first or establish a toehold in the nether and then go walk about in that dark place to gather these materials before I then work on the workshop and our uh, permanent storage system. Hopefully I'll sort that out by the next episode. Once again, I thank you for continuing the journey with me. And uh, until next time, cheers.